Hello, welcome to Fully Charged, or maybe it should be called Fully Filled, because what I'm leaning against here is the Toyota Mirai fuel cell car. Uh, we've already test driven this on Fully Charged, but today is a little bit special, because this is the launch of the ITM hydrogen refueling station. But there's something very special about these hydrogen fueling stations. A lot of discussion about where hydrogen comes from. This hydrogen comes from there, right where the, the fuel pump is. The hydrogen is made on site using renewable energy. It's used as a load balancing demand on the grid. So that wind turbine behind there, generating electricity that goes in, splits water in this machinery that's behind this wall here, produces hydrogen that goes into this pump, that goes into the car that you then drive along. So this is really, really a very, very clean car. The only thing that comes out of it is water, and the only thing that goes into it is hydrogen. It's quite remarkable. container we have the electrolyzer stacks that you can see right and then we have all the utility this is a water purifier for example right we have a, a gas compressor that takes the gas from 20 bar to up to a thousand bar right uh -huh. within that compressor at the lower level we have high pressure stores right we're storing hydrogen at a thousand bar wow and then that, that gas is available on demand every every time a, 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 vehicle, a vehicle comes, comes and, what, and it goes into the vehicle at less than a thousand bar, doesn't it? No, right. or is it or is we take the, the, the vehicle pressure up to seven hundred bar. Right. Yeah. Nominal. Yeah. In reality, during a refueling event, we go above that. Right. We go to seven fifty, eight hundred bars, right. so that when the gas cools down, it's a full okay. tank. Oh, I see. What the industry has done, the, the solution that we've come come up with, is to cool down the gas en route to the vehicle. Right. So there is cooling equipment in that plant that takes the gas to minus 40 degrees. Right. Because I remember when I've used one before, the, the, the hose got very cold as we filled the that's car. That's why I assumed right. it was cold. Yeah, right. No, but that's, you've, that's you've chilled cooling it. the gas right. so that the right. tank doesn't overheat. Right. And yeah. the, the whole operation is safe. Yeah. There is a lot of, obviously, a lot of safety yes. margin in yeah. there. Yeah. But we, we always cool down the gas to minus 40 degrees. Right. Part of the refueling protocol, so this is something that the whole industry has been working on for a few years, is developing a refueling procedure right. that we all agree. Yes, so it's the, universal the for that, everything. Exactly, yeah. the people that supply the infrastructure and the people that make the cars yeah. have agreed right. on that procedure. Right. And then that makes the vehicles and the stations compatible with each other. Right. And we can refuel them within a very short period of time. Yeah. And we are, we are confident that all the components within the vehicle are rated for those low temperatures and high pressures. Yeah, yeah. And we get to, to a scenario where you can effectively refuel a vehicle uh, in a very similar way to a, 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 any, any other yeah. fuel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Mirai is um, Japanese for the future. Right. And uh, there's a very strong link to our Prius, um, which is Latin for to go before. Oh. And in the development process, the clear objective was to deliver a vehicle that produces its own electricity. Right. Uh, that being, uh, in the first case, a uh, petrol-driven engine. And um, that system's modular, and that's allowed it to be incorporated uh, with a fuel cell stack. In this case, it's producing electricity through the fuel cell and regenerative braking. It really is a Prius, but without a petrol engine. It's, it's a Prius it's a, with a fuel cell. It's using our hybrid technology, right. and that's the whole purpose of that development. And these nine, nine odd million vehicles that we've got on the road has been really prototypes, if you like, for delivering the fuel cell. So we take the body off, Ooh. and there you can see the interior. There's, that's me there. Look, you see the bald patch the seats and then you take that off and you can see how the vehicle runs there's the one fuel tank the other fuel tank that's the hydrogen fuel tank that's the battery uh, and then it goes then the fuel goes through here so that's the fuel cell under the passenger seat that's some more electronics I can't remember and that's where the electric motor is and the battery control and the energy control system there driving the front wheels so that is your classic Toyota Mirai Oh, it took, uh, it took ten, my... just under 10 years to sell the first million uh, Prius. Right. Um, however, it took nine months to sell the last million. 
right. and now we're just over nine million. One thing that we know that we've got a big head start on in terms of fuel cell is the fact that we have the history of um, of hybrid vehicles. So the technology development for uh, developing the electric motors, the batteries, the the drivetrain has all been done. Right. So from an engineering point of view, we can quite quickly adopt it in fuel cell. Because you, you were telling me that the actual electric motor that's driving us along here, you already use in the, in what was it in the Lexus, the that's, Lexus hybrid. That's correct. So drivetrain has an electric motor on the front axle. That electric motor is from our Lexus RX 450, and um, the battery we use is actually from a, a hybrid we don't have in the UK, but it's a, it's a derivative of the Camry um, right. battery. Um, and then, and is that a lithium-ion battery? Uh, no, we use nickel metal hydride. Oh, it is nickel metal hydride. All oh, right, yeah. but as in the Prius, as in the original Prius. That's right. right. Yeah. Uh, it's a very deliberate um, uh, decision because that means that we can actually um, use a technology we're very familiar with, um, but familiar in both the uh, robustness but also the production. Right. It's because um, they've certainly proved themselves to be massively more robust than was originally predicted. I mean, you know. The, the Priuses that have done hundreds of thousands of miles on them and they still work, you know. So yeah, they're a first, first generation Prius, which is almost well, 19 years ago when we, when we launched it, uh, still running on their original batteries and um, for the cycling that you do in terms of stop-start, regenerative braking, it is, um, we found to be better than lithium-ion. Lithium-ion is better for plug-in. There are pros and cons for both, but at the moment certainly it's cheaper, easier, safer to produce nickel metal hydride than lithium. The motive power of these vehicles will often outlast the structure of the vehicle that it's, that it's housed in. You know, where, where, where the original fear was, oh my God, you know, my diesel engine's done 150,000 miles, I, you know, I can rely on it. You know, but we all know that to keep a, a, an internal combustion engine going requires an enormous amount of spares and servicing and oil and all those things. That's right, so you, you, you really are looking at a total chemical process. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not quite the same, but let's face it, you and I are breathing now, we're extracting oxygen from the air, which in our lungs and our body is creating electricity, and yeah. that's how we we're yes. operating. Well, in effect, it's a, it's a similar uh, sort of process where it's taking oxygen from the air, reacting it with the hydrogen to release the energy, and the uh, byproduct is water, yeah. and it's a complete chemical process. So nothing, there's no wear, there's no moving parts. The electricity itself is flowing just on a copper circuit, um, and that uh, provides you with the drive. An electric yeah. drive is very reliable. Yes. If you think about the, the use of um, the fuel cell, it, as it produces no heat or no noise, it has other purposes. So you can use the fuel stack as a, a mobile, uh, a generator. They're really sort of focused on trying to make vehicles as a backup system. So you have that with all our hybrids, where the hybrids have a um, uh, system which allows you to, to run your house through your car. Oh, even from a, like a, a, a petrol hybrid? I mean, That's right. That really? Wow. The comparison that you can make is that a typical 50 litre um, petrol tank will allow you to run a, run a house for a couple of days. Whereas a hydrogen vehicle will run your house for a week, and there's right. no emissions, there's no noise. So this this car then, if it had full tanks, could run a house for a week. I mean, that's how yeah. much juice it's producing. Wow. And, and the system's available today. We right. don't have it in Europe because it's two, it's a two twenty volt system. Right. Um, but the 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 technology behind it is all being used today in Japan, Far East, and wow. steadily growing in the States as well. So. Okay, so I'll do my not very knowledgeable reservations about hydrogen as a fuel. What comes out of the back of a battery electric car is nothing. What comes out of the back of a hydrogen fuel cell car is water. But where does the electricity come from for the battery car? Where does the hydrogen come from? But what's so exciting about this is this car is not running on hydrogen that's come out of fossil fuels. Fuel cell electric vehicle enables you to do is to fill up with hydrogen, a store of energy, that was made at times that suited the electricity grid. The big issue with um, increasing penetration of renewable energy on the grid is, is managing supply and demand. We used to, when we had coal plant, we used to manage that through steam chests and spinning reserves that would keep that balance of supply and demand. And you need that to maintain frequency on the grid uh, at 50 hertz. 50 hertz, uh, I've uh, learnt that. Now, what our electrolyzer systems are able to do, they're, they're 
they're rapid response, so they can turn on and off in a second. Right. And they're able to harness and, they can, and turn on to fully utilize renewable energy right. or surplus energy on the grid and convert it to fuel, rather than the current position where we're turning off the wind turbines, yes. uh, etc., when supply exceeds demand. And you can make it anywhere. So when you've got a water supply and electricity supply, you can make fuel for your cars. You can make it at petrol stations, or the refueling stations, I should say. So there's no need for that traditional model of dist distributed fuel. You're making clean fuel, it's carbon free in its production, and carbon free in that it's not distributed by tanker or transport. So effectively, you're filling up with stored energy. Yes. And it's managed export of energy from the electricity grid via the, um, your hydrogen store right. into the car. So you're not plugging in to spontaneously produce electricity from, and putting a strain on the grid. Right. You're filling up with a store of energy that was made at times when electricity is in surplus and it's lowest cost but also when it's greenest. Because I mean, that's one thing I must admit, I genuinely didn't know, was that you could, for instance, as you described earlier, cook on, you could have a hydrogen cooker. You can. I mean, you can heat, so you can, you, you could, I mean, you then conceivably could have a hydrogen boiler that heated water, that, I mean, is that, is that technically possible? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, everything you can do with your normal fuel, you can do with hydrogen, because coal, oil, gas, the energy vector, it's hydrogen. Right, so what, the, what is and actually the, and the creating the heat is the hydrogen, in fact. Yeah, yeah, yes, it's that energy vector. So the only difference that we're doing is making that fuel not from fossil fuel, right. but, but making that energy vector from water. Yes. Through splitting water into its constituent parts, hydrogen, oxygen, mm. and utilizing that hydrogen, a clean fuel, that's clean emissions, for a variety of different ways. Transport wing, one of them, um, and that's now enabled through the fuel cell electric vehicles that are now on the road. Um, and it's not just cars, it's also buses, right. public transport. Trucks. And yeah. trucks. I mean, the, the, for me, it's, it's, it's all about how we can introduce technology that can be rapidly adopted in such a way that it doesn't disrupt business routine right. or your social routines as in with solar panels getting much cheaper is the same thing happening with exactly with it's hydrogen fuel cells and the structures and the backup systems for that yes in terms of electrolyzers and fuel cells there, there's an enormous amount of development that's that's being undertaken as as well as deployment so for instance we, from our experience with the electric electrolyzer systems that we deploy in Germany, for instance, where we're, we're operating with the German utilities to um, inject hydrogen to the gas grid um, in Frankfurt, for instance. We, the difference between our first generation and second generation is that we've been able to halve the amount of gas production kit, but have the same amount of gas production right, right. in a very short period of time. Right. And so we're making uh, leaps and bounds in terms of the, the amount of gas we can produce um, and and the increase the performance and yeah. um, so you're generally getting you know a reduction in cost per uh, absolutely. per kilo yeah, of, yeah. of and, and, and it'll it'll keep going. That's all we've got time for this episode of Fully Charged. Uh, please come back again. Please subscribe. Please check the Patreon link down below if you want to support Fully Charged. We'd be very very grateful. But I think this has been an extremely interesting show. I think we've learned a lot about the future of hydrogen, not only hydrogen fuel cells, but where hydrogen comes from. Hydrogen is coming from just up there. This is, I think, a brilliant step forward. I'm really impressed with this technology. I want to thank ITM for setting all this up so we could film it today. And uh, obviously, as always, if you have been, thank you for watching.